three three days left. I guess four days left, right? 22, 23, 24, 25. I feel like 25 is, is a special day, though. I don't remember. I don't remember if it's 25 or the day after. Let's take a look at 22. So we're going on a trail with the monkeys. Monkeys explain that the grove is protected by a force field. There's a password. Tracing a specific path on a strangely shaped board. At least you're pretty sure that's what you have to do. The elephants aren't exactly fluent in monkey. Okay. Me either. <laughs> the monkeys give you notes that they took the last time they saw the password entered. The last time we got notes from the monkeys, it was wrong. And we had to do part two. So we've got basically a bunch of locations in a grid that isn't necessarily filled. So I, I'm assuming that we can only step on the places that have things. Ten right, five left, five right, ten left, four right, five left, five. Okay. First half is a map of the board. So this is looking like a B tree map it's com or maybe a graph. It's comprised of a set of open tiles on which you can move, drawn dot and solid walls, tiles through which you cannot enter drawn hash. So we can't step on hashes. We can go to dot. The second half is a description of the path you must follow. It consists of alternating numbers and letters. A number indicates the number of tiles to move. If you run into wall, you stop moving forward and continue with the next instruction. A letter indicates whether to turn 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise. Turning happens in place. It does not change your current tile. So a path like 10R5 means go forward 10 tiles, then turn clockwise 90 degrees, then go forward five tiles. You begin, this reminds me of SVG. <laughs> You begin in the path in the leftmost open tile of the top row of tiles. Initially, you are facing to the right from the perspective of how the map is drawn. So where are so the leftmost open tile of the top row of tiles? So is that this or is that this? I guess it's here. Initially, you're facing to the right. If a movement instruction would take you off the map, you wrap around to the other side of the board. Portals, yay. <laughs> in other words, if your next tile is off the board, you should instead look in the direction opposite of your current facing as far as you can until you find the opposite edge of the board then reappear there okay so each of these is going to be moddable basically uh unless there is a hash at which point i assume we stop like we would if we were gonna go to the right and go off the board here i assume we would stop in this location and not cross this hash for example, if you're at A facing to the right, the tile in front of you is marked B. If you're at C and facing down, the tile in front of you is marked D. It's possible for the next tile after wrapping to be a wall. This still counts as there being a wall in front of you, so movement stops before you actually wrap to the other side. By drawing the last facing you had with an arrow on each tile, you visit the full path taken by the above example looks like this. So right, down, right, portal, down, right, down, portal, down, right, and then we stop. To finish providing the password to the strange input device, you need to determine the numbers for your final row, column, and facing as your final position. Rows start from one at the top and count downward. Why are these always one indexed? It seems like such a, I, I don't know. It's just, it seems like we could just zero index these and get rid of a whole bunch of confusion. Rows start from one at the top and count downward. Columns start from one at the left and count rightward. In the above example, row one, column one refers to the empty space with no tile on it in the top left corner. Facing is zero for right, one for down, two for left, and three for up. The final password is the sum of 1,000 times the row, four times the column, and the facing. So we have to track the facing. Uh, while I was reading this, I was thinking that maybe we could just swap the X and Y, but I don't think that's v I don't think that makes sense. <laughs> Let's say in the above example, the final row is six, the final column is eight, and the final facing is zero. So the final password is six thousand and thirty-two. So let's get the answer in here. I feel like I feel like I want to stick everything in a B tree map and then do a bunch of finds. So like if we're in this position here, right, then we can and we're facing right, then we can do a find for all of these values and sort them by the X. Whereas if we are here, then we can do a find for all of the vertical values uh, that match the X value and then sort them from top to bottom. And we can keep doing that in any direction that we need to go. And that will give us at least a consistent thing to operate on. So we'll always have one VEC that is either like these three or this down to here or whatever. And then we're just choosing which like value to use. And that always drops us at a position and we turn so I think we'll have an enum for up, down, left, right. I think we'll pull this into a B tree map and we'll do finds or filters for these. It does mean that for every like direction that we go, we have to do a find through all of the items. I don't think that's gonna be a big deal. Yeah, 
I don't think that's going to be a big deal. So let's get the input. I see that the, the end of this input doesn't actually have spaces. I do feel like the other thing that would make sense is sticking this in a 2D array or like a 2D matrix because then we could do like the top row and then we would only have to do like X axis, Y axis, that kind of thing. I feel like that would work too. Maybe we'll do that as a second approach. We'll refactor to use that. And we'll start with just the B-tree map. I feel like the, the matrix approach would require us to parse in all of the characters and then fill out the spaces for some of them. So we would have like none, some dot, and some hash. And then these all have to be none here. So we kind of have to get these indexes anyway. Make sure we lined this up correctly. Dot, hash, dot, dot. And then D is there. That was the wrong. Is that actually wrong? One, two, three, four. Four spaces is the wrong amount of space. Why did this? Oh, it auto formatted. There we go. This is the right. <laughs> Maybe we'll stick this in a file instead and we'll do include stir. We've done this before um, for input that is particularly white space sensitive. So this will be text.test and this will be include stir dot dot slash dot dot slash text. Uh, that's the wrong file, I assume. Couldn't reach source. Okay, so we're in source. So we're in source, we go up one directory and we see test. So parsing, this is what we've got. We've got a bunch of empty spaces. I think that we just parse in everything and we enumerate over everything. The other thing is that I pulled in the wrong, <laughs> I pulled in the wrong test input. I need to pull this in. Glad I figured that out already. Okay, so we're gonna need this. So it's 10 and then face right and then five and then face left and then five and then face left and then five, right? Is that the way to read that? A number indicates the number of tiles to move in the direction you're facing. If you run into a wall, you stop moving and continue with the next instruction. A letter indicates whether to turn 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise. So 10 moves, go forward 10 tiles, then turn counterclockwise or count clockwise 90 degrees, then go forward nine tiles. So I think we're gonna need enum uh, direction down left right and then we could like impl direction for turn which could take like a i don't really want to say a string slice we could reuse direction but it doesn't really have the same meaning i want to do left and right as a turn rather than up down left right so this will take um a turn which can be a reference and it'll return a direction so if we are self and turn is what we need right so if we do self and turn and we match on this then Rust Analyzer fills this out for us. We can do like, if we are facing up and we turn left, then we're facing left, right? And inside of this, I'm going to use direction star because directions are the things that we really care about here. And I wanna use them without having to specify. So this is gonna be left, this is gonna be right. If we're facing down and we turn left, then we're facing right. Facing down and we turn right, we're facing left. Or if we're facing left and we turn left, we're facing down. We turn right, we're up. We're facing right and we turn left, we're facing up. Otherwise we're facing down. So we'll be able to keep the direction we're facing. And then we just do dot turn with whatever the turn is at the end. So we'll parse turns into turn. And we could do like a struct move that is like paces U32. I don't, probably I, because we're gonna need to deal with, I'm gonna use I for these numbers, even though they're all gonna be, I think positive. Specifically because I know we're going to do integer math later. And I don't know if we're going to need to do negative numbers. Although I think we never will, now that I think about it. I think that if we loop around, we always hit zero. So these can be unsigned integers. Um, the number of paces we have to move, and then also a turn, right? So this is the bottom line parser. So we'll have moves, which is an input with a string slice, returns an I result, string slice, and um, a VECA moves, right? VECA move. And this will be, I guess not every move will have a turn at the end, right? So maybe move is the wrong choice here. I wonder if this changes for the input, actually, now that I think about it. Cause like this ends with 44 and it starts with a number and a letter. So if we parsed a number and a letter, we would get to here and then we would just have 44 and no turn. So I think we can just do these as individuals right in a move and it's either paces which is a u64 or it's a turn that's a turn and then we just go through them all over and over and then here we get to do many one alt u64 uh, this needs to be in a tuple u64 and alt car l 
car r so many one has to come from non multi many u64 and car are colliding right now with the u64 type and the car type so if we do character complete we could also do u64 and car here and i think we'll be fine we do have to pass that input these do have to get mapped as well so map this is a turn left dot map a turn right and then a u64 dot map this is actually going to be wrapped in move so it's going to be move turn which means that this can then be move paces so we're parsing all the moves by doing either a u64 or an l or an r and all of those get mapped over to turn them into either a move paces or a move turn that should be fine for moves we then also need to pull all of these values in so i think the easiest way to do this is to just grab everything to start with. So fn map, right? Input, string slice, i result, string slice. And this is going to return a B tree map, I think. And it's going to be a B tree map of. Do we want an enum here? <laughs> like an enum cell is either like space we can walk on or a wall. So it's going to be. I mean, we could also do the vec2 here, which would be interesting. I think we can do that. Maybe we do. Maybe we use the glam type here. I think we have to use a hash map if we use the glam type because it doesn't have an ordering inherently. But if we do the point that we're going to stick these in on and we are going to do the type of cell it is, then we get to do iterate one of, do we want to do one of? I'm, I'm trying to think here. We have space dot and hash, right? So we can we can deal with all of those for sure. Are there any gaps in the middle? Like there's no gaps in the middle in our test input. But are there gaps in the middle in our puzzle input? Is this wrapped is another question I have. So if we look at this, we get no middle gaps. So there's no like space here, for example. So we can rely on that assumption. If we do iterate, I need to go look up that again. Iterator wanted us to use Terminator last time we used it. So this is what that looks like, right? And this would be input. But we want to do one of this. And we could maybe do terminated line ending right and then that'll be one of one of these so we have our iterator we're doing one of until a line ending with terminated we get that iterator we enumerate because we need to to get the grid points i think this gives us each of the rows judging by the way that we did this so we get u size car why are we getting u size car here if we do an iterator oh because one of is going to get one of just a value right so now we've got a vec of cars coming into this map and so if v is the empty string then we're dropping it so this is going to be like a filter map if it is a dot then we do something if it's a hash then we do something if it's anything else we panic because invalid car character cool cool this needs to be some i vec two new and then we do wait we're getting a vec of cars here right so we get uh, y and we get v so i think this outward outer one is flat map so we get y and v and then we get we'll call this row row dot iter i guess we can do into iter right row dot into iter dot filter map and this has to be an enumerate because we want the x value so we'll get x and cell which gets us here which gets us to the map that we want to do which because this doesn't have an open curly brace is not formatting this here is going to be cell this is going to be an ivac2 which i don't think we've imported um do we not have glam right now we don't i got rid of it let's cargo add glam for kicks get that test back in pull ivac2 in so this is going to be x y and space and then we're going to do the same thing right here to return wall oh these are i32s i think that's fine for us i think we can do where's oh uh we could just do uvex here actually now that i think about it but i think these are still u32s so glam u32 would be a uvex2 we don't have a u64 i don't think we need one for this problem so we get to use a uvex2 but we do need to change our parsing because these are going to come in as u64s but we want them as u32s and of course each of these is going to have to be a u32 instead of a u size so we end up with an iterator of uvec2 cells collect and this is a b tree map uvec2 cell and it says that we implicitly return unit from map okay for map that's fine trait or is not implemented for uvec2 so that's our key indicator to go with a hash map instead this of course is going to return the uvec2 not the ivec2 we do need to bring hash map in when we iterate over all we need to remember is that hash map doesn't give us an ordered result so we could get it in different uh 
different outputs when we're looping over it. So we get this hash map, we get the result, we do okay, input parsed, and hopefully it's compiling. <laughs> uh, U32 isn't something we brought in, so we need to change our import up here from the U64 to the U32. Paces again is going to be a U32 because we're going to deal in U32s. Then we've got an issue may outlive borrowed value Y. Where are we borrowing? Row, intuit, or enumerate, sell. That's because we don't collect here or anything. So, like, we try to use Y here and we do the iterator here. So, we've got a parser iterator of string slices. I don't think we actually return any of the string slices. So, in this case, let's bring the right errors back up. In this case, I'm going to remove this move that I just added and show you the error. So we've got may outlive borrowed value Y. Y is borrowed here when we're using it as a U32. So right here, if we look at this, we get a U size, right? And we're just kind of trying to use it in the UVX spot, but we can force it to take ownership by doing this, by doing move on top of our closure. And this is different from the other day because in the other day where we uh, move was an option for us, because we were doing the same thing, right? We were filtering or mapping and we were returning this iterator, which was also borrowing from the outer closure. The issue that day was that we were also accessing something from the outer scope, but this time everything is just sitting here for us. So we're good. So we should be at not yet implemented. And then we should have map and moves, string slice, I result. So we've got Vecca moves from the first parser, uh, the hash map from the second parser, which means that we'll do a string slice for the rest of the input, as well as the hash map first, and then the vec of moves second. And this will be a separated pair. It'll be map, it'll be, I think it's double new lines. So I'm just gonna do backslash twice, and then we're gonna do moves. And we'll pass in the input and return that. Separated pair, of course, it needs to be imported from non-sequence separated pair. And if we do let underscore map moves, equals map and moves from the input, uh, unwrap this because it always has to succeed, and then debug map and moves. And remember that I didn't put the derive on any of these as always, because that is, oh, I hit a button that I didn't mean to hit. So with that on everything that we're going to use because it doesn't matter for us. So like it could be in certain cases that you wouldn't want to derive debug for something for some reason. We're gonna mark that we aren't using this result here. We are currently tripping up on white space, it looks like. Let me guess, this is the second round of white space, so it's dot, 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 hash. Uh, test here, dot, 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 hash is the first one. So we're, we messed up on the first one. What did I do wrong? Many one of these, terminated in line ending, code tag. So the code is tag. We aren't obviously using a tag any here. Uh, my guess is that inside of one of would be where the tag would be or inside of line ending, or our tag is right here, double new lines. So in test, one, two, that seems right. Maybe it's just a single new line because we're terminated in a new line up there. So we only need to do line ending. So now we're failing at CRLF. So map isn't returning the result then. So we should be getting our input from res, I guess, right? So we could do res.map tuple, tuple.1 equals parsed or something like that, right? Uh, except that those won't be the same type. So what we want to do is input underscore, which will be unit, and then input parsed. I think we can return that. And then what we end up with is a successful parse. So this is 26, 24, 13, 10, whatever, whatever. And then we get down here and we do 10 right, 5 left, 5 right, 10 right, 5 left, 5 right. I want to say that that's all right. Left, 5. Okay. That looks fine to me. I think the only way we would know if we parsed this stuff out is by looking for all of the individual places, right? Like 12, 10, right? X, 12. So if we go to what, 9? Because 9 would be 10. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12, 10 is a space. That is true. So I'm fairly confident that we have our grid built up correctly. We could, of course, uh, write a display implementation and print all this out, which might not be a bad idea. Of course, if we were going to do that, we would have to import display on hash map uvec cell 2. So we would have to do something like struct map. I've been calling this field whenever we need to do this, uh, which is also totally fine. So anywhere we have this type is just going to be field. And then we're going to put this type here. 
So we've got three places to check, and then we would have to impl display for field. We would have to bring in display because we don't have display normally. We would have to implement the missing members. And now we have a to do here, which is great. This is going to be something like write macro f formatting string and then some values. And here we need this to be a field. So I think we actually do want to collect into this value here. So let's leave this here and then let's say field parsed here. So we're just wrapping the parsed in this field. Uh, field, of course, doesn't have derived debug on it because I always forget that. And now we get the opportunity basically to write a display implementation that will print out the field to make sure that we've parsed it correctly, more or less. So we could do something pretty silly here, like um, highest y equals self dot zero dot iter dot map. Actually, I don't need, I don't know if we need the highest y now that I think about it. I know that we have iter tools around. I know that there's group by. I think we can also sort after we group by. So if we do this, then anything that has the same key will be grouped into the same run. So we have to sort before we group by if we want to take that approach. So I think if we do self.0.keys.sorted, we'll get a sorted list. I think we might need to map over this. So if we map and we get our uvec2, xy, I think we want yx for the purposes of display. Uh, we haven't tried to print this out yet. So let's do, where is this? Let's get rid of this and let's do a print line display map. And that will panic, but we'll get our list here, which is going to be yx. So it's gonna be 0, 8, 0, 9, 0, 10, et cetera. So back in our display implementation, this is a sorted uh, list sorted by the x's and the y's or rather the y's and the x's. Uh, so we get all the zero rows first and so on, and all the zero x's first and so on. And we've confirmed that there's no gaps between. So I think we only have to worry about front loaded white space. Sorted still gives us an iterator. So we can group by key. How do we pass a group by key into a, for a tuple? No, we can pass a function in here. Okay. <laughs> uh, group by y underscore y. Right. Do we need to into iter this? I think we need to into iter this. Then we have the groups and we can map over them. So we can see here that we have a U32 as in the first slot, which is the group. So the Y value, as well as what is what looks like a group into iter tuple and some other stuff. So that's just reading our iterator chain, basically. So we get, I believe, Y and X's. That looks right. Of course, what I didn't do is I didn't keep all the data that we needed. <laughs> So I think we iter here, iter uvec2 cell. So this is a tuple, so it's uvec2 cell. And then we get the u32. We should get the additional information, group by y. So when we group by, we are mapping over this. I think we want sorted by, not sort. So I think this map wants to be sorted by, at which point we do this and we can do, so this is this is x1, y1, this y2, x2. Um, I think that I have a reference issue here. Let me check. Uh, debug sorted is not what I want here. Not what I want to look at anyway. This is a reference to a tuple and a reference to a tuple. And then group by returning this value return requires whatever, whatever. So we can do this. But really what we want to do is uvec to xy and return the y that we then into iter. And now we can map over this. And now we have the uvec to cell when we're mapping. <laughs> So we need to into iter on the x's, we need to map over it. We don't care about the position here because it's already sorted. So we get a cell, we can match on cell, fill match arms. If it's a space, it's a dot, which I'm gonna use as a string slice. And if it's a wall, it's a hash. We're gonna collect this. <laughs> Line is gonna be this. Line doesn't have a type on it, does it? And it can't be the return type. So this has to be, this will collect into a string eventually. And the issue with line is that it doesn't have a type. But the other thing we need from x's is, is the first value. So we can do repeat this, I think dot chain onto this, which we can do as a separate thing. So let space equals um, x's or space dot repeat, which just gives us a string. And then this is gonna be x's zero. I don't think we can do x's zero here actually. X's dot into iter, which will require us to clone this at some point. Dot next dot unwrap dot zero dot x. So we repeat that x times, is that right? As u size, because we need to repeat it. I think it's this minus one, right? If we're at zero. So if we ha if we're like if we have a thing at five, 
right? An X at five, a grid point at five, then zero, one, two, three, four. I guess we do need to repeat it five times. But the issue with doing that is we get a use after move for the value X because the group is not clonable, so to speak. And we can't do regular iter on it. So this is what we need to do, right? But we could cheat a little bit. <laughs> so iter tools has this thing called with position as well, which we could totally do this with. If we into iter dot with position, then we end up with, so what we really wanna do is get this base calculation, but we can't use X's twice, right? So if we into iter here, we do with position, this will tell us when the first one comes across. We can set up this padding variable, we could do position here. And instead of matching on cell, we can match on position. We get the cell from position. I'm gonna shorten this by using the use. So use iter tools position star, means I can get these out. The with position, uh, position enum gives us either first, middle, last, or only. So we either get first, middle, and last, or if it's the only element, then we get only. So in all these cases, we just return the cell. In the case of only, I think I'm just gonna actually you leave it to do here because I don't expect that to ever happen in our input and I'm just going to eliminate the possibility. So that means when we map over the positions, we get match on the position. The first element is going to have the UVEC that we care about. We're going to set our padding variable up here to the amount of padding that we need to print out and then we'll return the cell. So this cell will be the cell. We'll match on the cell and return which item it should be, collect over that. And then when we do this, we're going to format with padding and line. So if we do all of that, we are still left with the need to join with a new line, which means we don't have to collect, we just have to join, and we end up with output. Is this the right output? That's a great question. It looks like the right output to me from our test. So we've basically parsed this in and reconstructed the right output, as far as I can tell, which means that we did our parsing correctly, basically, which is wonderful. It's a bit of a mouthful for how we got these values. I chose to do the hash map, iterate over it, sort it using iter tools, and we sort it by comparing the tuple of the Y value and then the X value, which puts everything in the position exactly where it needs to be. We group by the Y values, which lets us turn that into an iterator over the, each of the groups. So each of the rows, that is what that means because we grouped by Y. We map over each of the rows and we set up the amount of padding they need at the front. By default, it's zero padding, but for each row, we iterate over that row with the position of the cell that we're looking at. We map over that position. If we're in the first position, then we set the padding to the right size. Otherwise, we just operate on the regular cell and that cell turns into either a dot or a hash, which we then collect with the appropriate number of, of padding spaces before it. And we join all of those rows with a new line. So there's a lot of destructuring here, but it's also not that complicated if you actually read it, right? And now we can, whenever we want to, print our field. <laughs> So now we actually need to do the problem. Yay. <laughs> so I think we iterate over all the moves, right? For M in moves, we're gonna match on the M. It's either gonna be, I don't like that. I don't know why Rust Analyzer keeps doing that. If we match on M, we get either paces or we get turn. We do need to set up like the current direction. I think we actually, well, I won't fold. Let's do where we're facing equals direction right and let let current position equals u vec to new and it's going to be from the map right so we'll let starting position equal map dot zero i think doing the sorted that we did before works so if we go up and we grab that because we just wrote it this sorted by so let's map <laughs> map dot iter dot sorted by uh, why is it complaining about map dot iter I'm gonna stick zeros in here for a second just to get rid of that error. Oh, it's map.0.iter, that's why. Because I didn't implement deref. So we have to go into zero for the new type. So we iter over it, we sort it by, and then we just get next, right? Gives us an option, we unwrap because it always has to exist. So we get a uvec2 in a cell. So this is actually going to be starting position, dot zero. So this is gonna be a reference to a uvec2 right now. I don't know that we want it to be though. I think we wanna just own this. So I'm gonna basically clone it by dereferencing it, give it the uvec2 into current position. So we just found by sorting the top left tile that we have, which will be y0 or the lowest y value and the lowest x value, which is exactly where we need it to be. Uh, we stick that for the current position. We iterate over each of the moves. For paces, we have to move forward. And then for turn, we do facing, turn, turn. Facing equals, I guess, would be the, the real thing here. So this will be um, a unit return. And then we have some number to go in for paces. And we have a current position, 
right? I feel like we should have like a get Y and a get X for this paces on field specifically, right? So if we impl field here and we do get row, we need to pick a Y value for the row, probably want access to self at some point, And we return a VEC of references to UVEX and Y is a U32 because that's what we're using. So we do self.iter, not instrument, iter dot filter. We're going to collect all of this and I am not seeing self.0, self.0 dot iter filter. The filter is going to be on the UVEC2 and the cell. So I think we'll destructure here UVEC2 xy cell cell doesn't matter we're not going to use it x doesn't matter because we're going to filter on y equals y right so we need to rename this we're going to rename this target y i guess the other thing we could do here is dot dot and just have y there uh y and target y are probably not the same value here so we've got a reference to u32 in the filter and the target y is a u32 so i'll just make that a reference and then uvec is not a type so this would need to be a uvec2 expected vec found unit because we're not actually returning this filtered but we haven't actually i don't know that we want this i think we want this as a return type so we do a get row that row gets us a target y value in the left to right direction so we can always choose to reverse this or we can choose to go in any direction so we need to do the same thing for the other way so this is going to be target x that's the same code this can't be the same name though it's got to be get column so this will get us a row um from zero to whatever on the x and this will get us a column from zero to whatever on the y we just got to remember no everything is zero zero on the top left i think we're good so that said we match on the moves we get some number right that's how far we have to move so i'm going to call that paces to move and then field dot get depending on the direction though so we match on facing we probably want to break this out into another function now that i'm i'm writing this like this and i'm looking at it and i'm going this is really going to be probably too much code to stick in here and too nested so we're facing either up down left or right up is field dot get current position dot y is that correct field dot get row if we are facing up then we need to go in a column so we need to get column so this is going to be field dot get column current position dot y why can what's wrong with field here field dot zero is what it's going to be oh does field not exist what did i call this map let's call this field so field dot get column current position this is at some point going to have to be reversed although if i write that like that right now it won't work and it's going to be get row and dot x and get dot x and if we go down we don't actually reverse it if we go up we reverse it but i'm not sure that we actually need to in either in either case yet so we need to move in the up direction we get the column that we need to move in we have the position that we're on we can't use i don't think we can use rotate left or anything like that so using like a vec deck probably doesn't help us on some level i feel like it will though because I believe rotate wraps. So the only thing we need to do is check the next position before we rotate. Um, rotate left and rotate right. So it rotates the double-ended queue mid places. It rotates the whole queue though. That's not really what we want. We want to move our element one place. So we have the list of uvec twos and our index in that list. We also have the cells. So we could just do a series of checks. So let's say we're moving up the Y column. We need to do a series of checks for zero to paces to move, right? So zero dot paces to move, because paces to move is always positive. There's no negatives. And I think that that is right. So if we go 10 right, that'll give us zero to nine, which will give us the wrong answer, right? So where is our, I need a looping one, right? So this is one, two, three. This is the third instruction. Our third instruction is, where is it? One, two, three, or five to the right. Is that correct? One, two, three, four, five. Zero won't do anything. So it needs to be one to dot dot equals, right? Plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five. So this is going to be one dot dot equals paces to move. If we do it this way, we need to manually handle the wrapping, which is not my favorite. I would like to do like some dot next and then check and then next and then check that kind of thing, which if we cycle, we can do, right? So if we field dot get column dot air dot cycle, I think the only problem is we don't know what index we are in this. We could find that easily though. Once we know what index we are in this, 
The only question I have is if negative indexes work, which they don't. So we would just have to reverse it for going down, which is fine. So if we iter.cycle, we first need to field dot zero dot find. No, we need to field dot, dot get column. Let column equals field dot get column current position dot y. So we need this. We need this vec, right? Column dot find our position in it, which is not necessarily the position that we are globally. So it's not our xy position. So if we column dot iter dot find, we really don't want find, we want position because we want the index and we want the predicate to be predicated <laughs> on the vec. We don't care about the cell. We want vec equals current position. And this has to exist or we've messed up. So I'm gonna unwrap. So this is our current index and we just need to get our shared references in order there. I'm gonna comment out these other ones for the moment. No, I'm not. So direction up, all of this, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make all of these unit and then stick this with a to-do so that all of those return unit and we get to continue without type errors that get in our way that aren't relevant. So the current index is the column.iter. We get the position, which is our index, right? So we get a U size there. Then we don't need to get the column again because we already have it. Uh, we need to iter and cycle over it. Dot nth current index, I think. Let's do uh, it. Let mute it equals this. We cycle it dot nth. It dot nth is an option. So it'll get whatever is there. I think it'll also skip us forward. <laughs> We're not going to go up in this either, are we? So I need to keep writing it before we can even test it. So if we do nth on an iterator, returns the nth element of the iterator. Nth, okay, so it is zero indexed. So zero returns the first. So our index should be good. And then for one dot dot equal paces to move, I guess we'll do i in. What is this for y in? No, we're going to call this index or let's call this additional in one dot dot equal paces to move. We do it dot next. So it really, we didn't end up using the index. So we could have just done like repeat on, on the paces to move or something. Um, I guess this doesn't matter either. So let's do it dot next. So let next cell equals it dot next to unwrap because it's cycled. So it should always unwrap. Then we've got next cell here, right? Next cell dot one is the actual cell. If I remember our setup here, if it's a space, we're good. We can keep moving. If it's a wall, we have to stop at the previous. So I think we just stick a break at wall and we match here. So we can probably just do if let cell wall equals next cell dot one break else destination <laughs> equals next cell dot zero. Does that sound right? next uh, or destination. So let mute destination uh, equals a current cell or something. We'll just copy that in the reference to uvec2. Current cell doesn't exist, does it? What do I call it? Current position? No. Well, current position is something we need to update. I guess that is it, right? Current position. We don't want destination. We want current position. And current position is something that we need to uh, clone or dereference or whatnot. Uh, this is not marked as mutable. So we need to do that too. Yada yada. Let mute current position equals this. So that's that, I think. Eight zero, not yet implemented. We are still going through everything here, right? So is this function, since it's pretty vertical and pretty nested, can we pull this out easily? Field.get column. So if we get the column and we pass in, we probably should try anyway, right? So if we paste, paste is to move, we write paste here. No idea what we're returning yet, but <laughs> at least when we save this, it is not. Let's do field. Field doesn't ever get modified. It only gets referenced. So this can be a, a reference to a field. We need a current current position, which we do need to be a mutable uh, reference. And then paces to move is how far we have to move. So it's going to be a U32, if I remember correctly. I misspelled current position. Yada yada equals next cell. So we need to do field here with a shared reference. We need to do current position. So if we do paste, we pass in a shared reference to field. We pass in the exclusive reference to current position so we can modify it. We pass in the paces to move. Then our current position should update because pace is taking the shared reference to field, a mutable reference to, or an exclusive reference to uvec2, and then a paces to move. We do the exact same thing we just did. And if we do something like debug current position here and debug current position here, it should change, provided, of course, it's not running into a wall. 250 is here. We're running into a to-do. Unfortunately, pace currently 
has a column inside of it to make this useful for the other versions of it. I think we need to get ahead of that. So we call it positions maybe. And it's a vec of references to uvec2 and references to cell, which is of course in a tuple. It's gonna look like that. So we have to do the get column outside. So we do this like this positions here. The get column is going to be the positions. And I think we're good positions.iter. Yeah, we just need to reverse it before we push it in. And this could also be input iter. So let's start by putting this here, which will return us the vec for the column for vertical, right? This is gonna be a uh, use of barred variable because we are passing it in as mutable here. So that's an easy fix. We do this and we get y. So we're just taking the value out. We're basically copying the u32 or whatever it is, and we're passing it into field.getColumn here. We could also call field get column above, chose not to, chose to do it this way. I guess we don't need field then if we aren't doing the get, which is kind of cool because we're passing in positions. So theoretically, field get column y should also be able to take an impl iterator item equals this. Of course, if we do that and these are references, we do need to uh, specify how these work. This is going to be positions. So what I've done here is We've taken the current position y, we've run pace on it, we've passed in the current position as mutable, the amount of paces we have to move, and then we passed in our like vec of positions as an iterator. And I did that to kind of show you how to implement this kind of thing. So pace, because we have these references here, we have to specify this lifetime, or rather the name of the lifetime. In this case, it's gonna be impl iterator, or impl iterator, which is the name of the trait. And the item inside of that iterator is gonna be a reference to a tuple which holds references to uvec2s and cells. So then we can clone this iterator and get our position, and then we can do positions.cycle and do nth and things like that, and this should all work. Which means that we should be able to take this code right here and in each of these spots, drop it in. And in this case, I'll keep doing the same kind of pattern, but this needs to be reversed. And these both need to be X and this needs to be column and row. Actually down isn't the reversed one, is it? Up is the reversed one. Of course it is, because it goes negative. So we reverse there, we iter here, we reverse on left but going to the right is regular. And then we're unwrapping on a none value at 187. So this position should always be there, right? So uh, so you'll note I can't debug any of this because we did impl iterator plus clone so that we could do this clone, but we didn't do plus debug. So Rust doesn't know that we actually want this to be able to implement debug. Now we do need to bring that in. So I'm gonna bring it in using core format debug. And then it allows us to debug this out. So we get, let's see, positions equals iter 15, 8, 12, 8, 13, 8, 9, 8, 8, 8, 10, 8, 14, 8. This is not sorted right now is our big issue. That's a huge issue for us. So I think we can do that in pace or not in pace in um, get row and get column. So get row here, iter, filter, and then this needs to sorted by, and we end up with the two uvex and the cells here. So we're gonna destructure. Vec A, don't care about the cell. Vec B, don't care about the cell. So for the row, we wanna be sorted by X values. So vec A dot X dot comp, vec B dot X. And we don't need this in a tuple because we're only sorting by X values here. This needs to be a reference to be able to be compared against it. So this is great. And then we need to do the same thing here, but this needs to be sorted by Y because it's a column. So when we get into this, this turns into eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Current position eight, zero. Current position eight, zero is interesting because these don't have a position eight, zero. Did I reverse my math somewhere? Oh, this is actually get column, right? If we target a Y and we're equalitying against Y, no, that's get row, I'm right. <laughs> if all of the Ys are the same, then it's a row. The, inter the interesting part is that we are at eight zero, which is X and Y zero. So when we do get column, get column needs to be X and get row needs to be Y. I don't know why I thought the other way around. I always get like rows and columns and stuff like that mixed up. So it's always nice to not have to deal with them. But I think this is our issue. So we end up with a couple of rounds now, which is good, good sign. So this is zero five, whatever. So we are in 
y5 and current position is 75. So we aren't even implementing it yet. So <laughs> what's, what does our answer need to be actually? It's the final row is six, the final column is eight and the final facing is zero. So it's going to be row, column and facing. It's gonna be row plus one, column plus one and facing is zero, one, two, three. 100 times row plus one, four times column, and then facing. What is that? Oh. <laughs> a thousand times the row, okay. Four times the column, okay. And the facing? Why doesn't that just say and add the facing? It's one word. So that's what it is. It's just and added the facing. Oy. So this is going to be 1,000 times current position. Is it row? Okay, so row is y plus x plus match whatever direction that we're in for the end. It's current direction or something, right? It's facing. Facing is the one. Facing is the variable. Of course, Rust Analyzer throws me back for a loop at the top, but we throw facing in here. And then right was zero. Zero right, one down, two left. Zero right, one down, two left, three up. So math expression to string. And we've got 5,028 because I'm not doing the additions here either. So this is plus one and this is plus one because we are zero indexed, but in the problem, they want us to be one indexed. And that is the correct answer. <laughs> so let's get our actual input for part one. Grab all this, put this in here. Cargo run bin part one. Let's get, let's get rid of these debugs because who needs them anyway? And I didn't use tracing today, even though we have it around. <laughs> so if we do this, we get this number. Is this number the magic right number for today's problem? Yes, it is. Gold star, gold star, gold star. Okay. So let's go over the overall code first. Process part one, we parse out the field and the moves separately. So we get the field and the moves from our parser. We set up the direction we're facing and we get our starting position by iterating through field and finding the top left or the first value basically from this sort. This is just the structuring. You could write this in really any way that you wanted to. You could do, I found it easiest to write like this though. It's interesting to note if you haven't seen it, that this is how you rename a variable. So uvec2 has the fields x and y, but if I wanna call them x1 and y1 here and y1 or x2 and y2 here, you just do this. So it's x colon and then the value. Our current position is set to that starting position. So it's set to the uvec2. And then we iterate over all the moves. The easier thing to do is turn. So if we're facing some direction and we have to turn, then we turn in that direction and we set our new direction. If we have to walk some paces, then we have to match on which direction we're going because that tells us how to set up the back of positions. For each of those options, up, down, left, right, we get either the column or the row that we're in, we iterate over it, and then we either reverse or we don't based on which direction we need to go in. What this does, is it means that when we write pace, the only thing that we need to care about is that we have a thing that we can iterate over that we can find a position in. So we end up with effectively a vec that is set up in the right direction so that we can always just go next, 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 and it'll cycle through for us, and then we'll find where we actually need to be or are. Then we do the little bit of math that they want us to do to get the value, and we're done. So we did a lot of setup today, especially. We have an enum for direction and enum for turn. So I kept these different, even though I could have reused them because if we are turning, we can't turn up or down. We can only turn left or right. So I made that a different type because it's a different thing. And then on direction, I implemented a function called turn that takes a turn or shared reference to a turn and returns the new direction. And that's just one big match. So if we are facing up and we're turning left, then we're gonna be facing left. Get row and get column work very similarly. It takes the field that we're given right? So we've got this hash map of positions and what those cells contain. We iterate over them. We filter for the ones that match either the column or the row. So it matches either the X or the Y value. We sort them by either the X or the Y value, depending on whether we're getting a row or a column, right? So in column, we sort by Y. In row, we sort by X. Then we collect those because it's easy to collect them, even though maybe we don't have to. So we get a vec of references to uvec2s and references to cells here. This vec is the vec that we iterate over and then reverse or don't reverse depending on whether we're going left or right or up or down. Pace is responsible for taking the current position, the paces to move, and using this iterator 
to figure out what our next position is. So pace in this case takes the current position as a mutable reference or an exclusive reference, whichever way you want to think about that, takes the number of paces that we need to move, and it takes positions as something that implements iterator with items that are references to tuples of references to uvec2s and cells. We also, in addition to the iterator trait, want these things to implement clone and debug, although we don't need debug at the moment because we're no longer debugging anything out. So we could delete that and we could go back to this. That said, we take the positions iterator and we clone the iterator to find the position that we need to start at. That's our current index. That's where we are on the board. Then we turn positions into a cycle and we immediately advance to that position. Because we've previously set up the direction correctly, all we need to do is iterate the number of times that we need to iterate. And every time we can call next, we can check to see if we hit a wall. If we did, then we don't do anything. Otherwise, every round that we get a successful space that we can land on, we set current position to that cell. So when we break out of this for loop and then return from this function, we will have already set the position to a valid position. So let's take a look at part two. As you reach the force field, you think you hear some elves in the distance. Perhaps they've already arrived, or perhaps they're stuck in the force field. As you approach the strange input device, it isn't quite what the monkeys drew in their notes, as always. Instead, you're met with a large cube. Each of its six faces is a square of 50 by 50 tiles. To be fair, the monkey's map does have 50 by 50 regions on it, and if you were to carefully fold the map, you should be able to shape it into a cube. In the example above, the six smaller 4x4 four four faces of the cube are these. Okay. You still start in the same position with the same facing as before, but the wrapping rules are different. Sick. Now, if you walk off the board, you instead proceed around the cube. From the perspective of the map, this can look a little strange. In the above example, if you're at A and you move to the right, you would arrive at B facing down. How are we folding this? Okay, so it's a four by four on all sides, basically. So this would fold on, let's call, let's call the place C is in um, the face that's facing us. So the face that would be facing to the right in three dimensions is this B side. The face that would be facing up would be A. Facing away from us is this top. Facing left is this middle area right here. And under the cube is the one on the left. Walls still block your path, even if they're a little on the different face of the cube. If you're at E facing up, your movement is blocked by the wall marked by the arrow. Using the same method of drawing the last facing you had with the arrow on each tile, you visit the full path taken by the above example now looks like this. The final password is still calculated from your position and facing from the perspective of the map. In this example, the final row is five and the final column is seven and the final facing is three. So the final password is that. Fold the map into a cube, then follow the path given in the monkey's notes. What's the final password? So my question to start out is, is it always the same? No, it is not. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six sides here that are all equal, but we're not, I don't think we're told what size it is before we hit all of them, all right? So if we get our puzzle input, is this amount the same as this amount, the same as that amount? <laughs> this honestly feels like the same problem, except tedious. <laughs> How are, how are we supposed to know which ones fold where? Are we supposed to treat it like a piece of paper? So we're supposed to like figure out that these are connected to each other. So by the time we fold to here, we've got top right and facing us, and we've got bottom left and back. So programmatically, we can technically figure out which sides are connected. And then all we would need to do is basically, instead of doing, um, instead of doing just X for like get row or get column, right? We would try to, what, get X, Y, Z? Is there a Z coordinate here that we can use? But for example, if we were going to take, let's call this X to keep it simple, right? This would all be one row. Let's say that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the 10th row for these two. These are connected to the left. This is going to be on top because it's going to be facing us. This is going to be on bottom which means that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This row is the other side of that with this left-hand side starting at the edge up here on the left-hand side. And then it goes positive this way. So it's just a matter of lining up the slices for each of the faces, for each of the lines. And then it's exactly the same problem. Like we've already constructed this to be the exact same problem. We don't actually need to do anything but set up the rows and the columns correctly. I know this is possible, but it is a little bit tedious to implement. So I think I'm going to stop working on it right now and finish the video for tomorrow. And then I'll come back 
and see if I can figure it out in that time period. And if I can figure it out, I'll put it on the end of the video. If not, then then you'll hear me talking like this <laughs> and, and I'll uh, put it up, I don't know, tomorrow or something. But the, the approach is sound. All we need to do is figure out how to identify the faces based on uh, the relationship they have to the original face. We've already written the code for this to work. We don't need to change any of our logic. We just need to change how we generate the array that we give to our code. And we need to do that by wrapping these things around in three dimensions and then finding the loop around a given axis. So hopefully I'll see you in a little bit. If I don't, have a great rest of your day and I'll get you that other video tomorrow if I can.